Gifted students, what was it like growing up as the smart kid? Has it affected your adult life in any way? It was pretty cool for a while, but then everyone caught up to me in high school and now I'm just a little above average intelligence. I entered a culture where everyone, teachers, parents, relatives etc valued me for my smarts and so I used that as my yardstick to value other people for a long time. Nowadays I'm more interested in who shows compassion, loyalty, dedication, generosity, humor, etc had to work really hard to break the filters. Holy crap dude, everything on this thread is crazy familiar. Now that I'm out of school, I realize how much of my self worth I wrongly placed in my grades GPA. I feel this, it's not something you notice until you suddenly realize you don't have an external benchmark, however misplaced. To tell you that you're doing okay. Skipped a grade, which I probably could have used to become more emotionally mature. Cried a lot in math class. I'm still gifted with a terrible work ethic. Been there. Bonus points if your parents always noted that and the congratulations of course we knew you could do it. Your smart glided through high school and college to a job currently. Almost zero work ethic to speak of and it eats me up inside that I have to exert a ridiculous amount of self control to make myself do anything more than the bare minimum. I skipped a grade. So, no one saw me as the smart kid but instead as the diminutive 13 year old 9th grader in pre-calculus. You learn to keep your mouth shut. It wasn't that great. Yup, I always hated I was youngest in class. Almost always till master's degree. Everyone in my program was the smart kid. Some people have trouble adjusting to an environment in which they are now thoroughly average. Most definitely, going from the top 3% or so of my 40k college to grad school is was rough. Definitely have learned that academia is not the place for me. Haha <laughs> it's terrible. For one. You develop terrible work ethic because you never had to study when you were younger. Then comes Procalc and you have no clue what you're doing wrong and how to bring your grade up. When people start doing better than you and you become more average, you start becoming a bit disconnected with who you are as a person. For all your life you've identified as the smart one. Now you have no idea. One thing I missed going from an excellent student in high school to an average one in college was the attention I'd get from teachers as the smart one. I'd always feel they were generally looking out for me more. Of course, it didn't help that college class sizes were gigantic, but that anonymous feeling got to me. A bit embarrassing to admit. Hard, I skipped 4 years in school. It took me years to come to terms with the fact that I'm allowed to do what makes me happy, not what people expect because you have so much potential. When I applied to music school my mother's friends openly criticized her for letting me do it, because they couldn't understand why I wasn't moving into a brainy career path like medicine or law. Still get a lot of family members asking why I'm not doing this job that they think I'd be perfect for. I'm a nurse and family friend that have known me a while ask all the time why I didn't become a doctor. It's the most annoying thing ever. I am happy with my choice and prefer the day to day aspects of nursing much more. Yeah, it made me lazy. I used to be the smart kid, now I'm the nose a couple of things guy. It was boring until I discovered drugs and sex since I was acing all my classes anyway. Then I had a kid at 17. Gifted kids don't necessarily have a lot of common sense, not in my case anyway, but you get your crap together like everybody else, eventually, anyway. I was the typical overachiever until university, when I had a mental breakdown and developed depression and an anxiety disorder. Turns out, being intelligent doesn't help so much when the family history of mental illness hits you in early adulthood. Not going to lie, you grow up feeling kind of entitled to good test scores grades, and when that doesn't actually happen you start re-evaluating your life. Then, when you take classes with other gifted kids, and see that you're part of the average section of that group, you reconsider every academic achievement you've received. Haha, <laughs> I'm still a top student in my grade, still too lazy to do my homework, not as much as others though, but I stopped getting upset when my test scores didn't surpass those of my friends. Yup, I was always a top student through high school and undergrad at a small liberal arts school without too much effort. And then I went to grad school at an Ivy League medical school where everyone was a top student from their respective pasts. It was a rude awakening to be average. 
we're still learning about subject and predicates in freaking high school, and making posters too, when you factor in the two years of core curriculum in college, it felt like my life was in repeats for the first 20 years, now I'm so tuned out I'll never get back the frequency and make something of myself. Yes, in math and English, it was so repetitive from grade 6-12, drove me crazy. I didn't have the experience that many other people here have. I went through gifted from elementary till high school. It was freaking great. I basically realized that rules only apply to those who want to obey them. I used to leave classes no questions asked, no first hour class, no problem. After high school I got two degrees in math and physics, not two majors, two degrees. I went on to get a PhD from a top three school in physics. A lot of my success has come from understanding when to blow off meaningless bureaucracy, which the gifted program definitely gave me. Early on in high school I discovered I could coast with no effort, went to college because it was expected of me, didn't know what to study, and found out I didn't know how to study face obstacles. Basically, I went in with this idea of I'm smart and when I got in trouble academically, I still clung to that and made a huge mistake. I started telling myself I wasn't really trying. You see, if you don't actually try, you don't fail. Or so I thought. I was thinking like well of course I'm smart. If I really tried I would succeed. But I didn't really try. It didn't help that I was going through some major depression at the time and was rather socially isolated. Anyway, two semester and some bad grades. I dropped out. I built the whole thing up as a bujeeman in my mind and for years I avoided going back. Finally I did, and in a lot of ways, I felt deprogrammed. I was no longer a smart outcast. Now I was a guy in his mid-twenties attending classes with kids straight out of high school. Pretty humbling, but the whole thing was good for me. I can honestly say I was glad not to have the same pressure on me, or the same expectation to excel. Going back was a great decision, although I do find myself wishing I've done it earlier. Mostly the consequence of the whole thing has been that I'm always feeling like I'm playing catch up in my life. Like, here's where I was supposed to be in my late 20s, and here's where I actually am. It hasn't. Work ethic matters way more than what score you got on an IQ test. I wish more people understood this. I have seen lots of brilliant people fail out of college or not even try. The people who persevere, who can delay gratification, they are the ones who succeed. This is why the world is run by C students. It was really bizarre in my case because not only was I considered immensely intelligent throughout school, but I also had ADD kick me in the nuts when I was around 10 or 11. The first 5 years of school I was really into everything because everything was a totally new concept, and I just really enjoyed exploring these new things and excelled at it all. I recall a time in 5th grade, when my mom who was currently taking a college math course was having trouble understanding the advanced algebra textbook. And I picked up the book and was able to understand all the material rather quickly. Shortly after 5th grade passed all the new material for all the following years was just like okay. So this is how you make the math you learned last year a little more complicated. And this totally disinterested me because I really had already learned most of that material before it even came up. Since I was disinterested, my ADD tendencies decided it was better to draw pictures and screw around both in class and at home, rarely ever completing assignments. It was almost as if it was mentally impossible to focus. I had years where I would get the breakdown of my grade, and in the assignment column it would say something like 16% but then the quiz and test columns would have 98%. Not that it's a good thing, but it's still one of my favorite stories, is when I was taking AP Calculus, and I had gained a reputation for myself as being the goof off, and never doing anything at all. The final test at the end of the class was worth 65% of the total grade, and when it came up to the time to do the test, I currently had 5% in that class. The teacher sat me down at a few points and even recommended I drop the class to take something easier but I refused. When the test came, I scored 114%, it was grades on a curve and I was a major outlier, so guess who passed with a C. Besides all those stories, the hard thing about the real world is just that life doesn't work to where you can do nothing and then ace the test. You have to do every single little step along the way, as menial and useless as those steps may seem, 
The real world will always take the guy that averages a C on everything and maybe squeaks out a B on the test over the guy that says frick the stupid crap and still gets 100% on the final test, metaphorically speaking. Lack of discipline, bad work ethic, started becoming more and more lazy and even falling behind everyone else. Even now, studying at the university, I fail pretty much all of my exams the first time I take them, cause I never actually learned how to study in the first place. Lonely, because few share your interests. Lonely, because displaying, showing off, an intellectual gift brings as much resentment as it does praise. Brains are particularly susceptible to resentment because, unlike say soccer or dancing, no one says hey, you're great at that. Thinking just is not my thing lol. Everyone fancies themselves to be intelligent, even though everyone can't be. Lonely, because most people would rather not be corrected, no matter how interesting you personally find the actual accurate information. This might not be clear to you for the first few decades. Actually, did you know that carrots don't substantially aid eyesight oh? And actually the Pennsylvania Dutch are German. Dutch is an American corruption of Deutsch and, hey, where you're going? Lonely, because stories puzzles converse that move slow enough to engage most people are interminable to you, and those that move fast enough for you are unintelligible for everyone else. Lonely because what makes you different can't be seen, so others who like you might walk right by, and not seek you out. There's no uniform, like a sports jersey our punk rock hair to indicate that you're in the 1%. Lonely, because logic is your favorite tool, but it is rarely used and often misapplied. Relationships, religion, politics, social situations, it is often offensive to apply logic to them. But, you're a logic guy. Lonely, because the world is not made for you. So, a little lonely. Very poetic. The inflated ego helps a lot with confidence. I would say that's not true, at least not for everyone. You can be smart and yet think you're average or a bit dumb. Like you're always achieving impressive feats in university and stuff, but still thinking that it was mainly chance that drove you there. Well, that's what happened to me anyway. I have insight for this thread, but too lazy to type it up. Good summary. I am not exceptionally gifted, just an average guy who gets straight B's in school. But I went to a middle school where a disproportionate amount of the kids were practically developmentally delayed because of poor parenting practices. The teachers knew this, and they were used to handling these kids. There is this Japanese saying, the stake that sticks up will be hammered down, and as a cognitively ordinary kid, I was frequently the youngest in my classes because I was the only one who had never been held back at some point. I ended up frequently taking on my teachers and calling them out on their crap. Like trying to tell me the word aftershave wasn't a real word and trying to ban me from reading Harry Potter. It resulted in a relatively combative middle school experience. I recall one incident in 7th grade where I was made to sing along to Humpty Dumpty along with a group of 1st graders. At one point, the teacher stood up and asked everyone, Okay, who thinks this sing along is supposed to be childish three guys, myself included, stood up. We were the only ones to do that in a group of 25. She kicked us out of class and made us clean the yard. I don't regret that crap one bit, but, as a teenager, I think it caused me to be somewhat more combative toward authority figures than I should have been. I think it was because of this that I ended up being rather shy as an adult. I am perfectly secure in my intellectual and analytical prowess, but consciously awkward when it comes to social interactions. I have always felt an immense pressure from my family. Parents and my parents close friends who are like my aunts and uncles. To work hard and not squander the gift I was born with. I will be receiving my PhD in biomedical science and translational medicine next Friday. My current work focuses on identifying a novel protein complex that is involved in triglyceride metabolism. Hopefully I'll lived up to their expectations and can leave something behind in this world to benefit mankind. Or a pharmaceutical company hires me and pays me a boatload of money. I often found myself in the 90 plus percentile on reading comprehension and math, took all gifted classes in middle school, graduated high school early, as kid, I always wished I was much smarter, I wanted to be a genius, instead I have mediocre smarts, I still do this as an adult, but now I also realize how little other people think at times, most of the time. 
It was hard. Intellectually, I was way ahead of my peer group, but emotionally and socially I wasn't. When I was moved forward a grade, I ended up being the youngest kid in my classes. All of them. So when my classmates were all getting their driver's licenses, I wasn't. When they were all allowed to see the naughty movies, I wasn't. Their parents set curfews that were usually later than mine, because I was younger. And puberty. Well, puberty was a very difficult time. I got into a lot of trouble, too. Even though I was a full academic year ahead, I was still not very intellectually stimulated. So I started trying to find ways to keep myself amused. These ended up not being very well thought of by authority figures. And then there were all the problems I had with bad habits. When you don't have to work at anything, intellectually, you're completely unprepared for those things that do require work, like essays, partner projects, etc. So you end up missing out on a lot of study skills, which all have a direct corollary to adult skills. As an adult, it has all basically led to a sense of unfulfillment. I don't think of myself as lazy, like some of the other commentators here, but I certainly lack the organizational skills that a less intelligent person was forced to develop, because previously, I just kept it all in my head. Now, of course, there are far too many things going on, and they last so much longer, that it's virtually impossible to keep everything in my head. But I lack the discipline and skill necessary for, say, a schedule book. Intelligence is not wisdom, and it is not common sense, and it is not discernment. It is, however, unfortunately, very highly regarded as a standalone product when, as a standalone product, it does not really add value. In other words, while I am able to learn things extremely quickly, I don't always know what things I should learn. And while I may be able to quickly and easily see logical faults, I don't always have the social skill to deftly bring them to light. In essence, I think my life would have been much, much simpler and easier if I weren't so smart. I got into my state's gifted high school program which, unlike most of its kind, included all four core subjects instead of just math and science. It was amazing. College level chemistry, calculus, literature, and geography. Interdisciplinary coordination of all four subjects. For example, we studied logic in math class while covering rhetoric and language and holding debates in a US government course. Video conferences with topic experts simulcast to all participating schools. A half dozen field trips each year. The opportunity to participate on a first robotics team, which was just a magical experience. The same five teachers for all four years, who became our mentors over time. And the same 20 classmates, who became my best friends. We even did an annual culminating project that required us to do original research to answer a question no one ever had before. We worked on this project throughout the school year, and it counted as the final exam grade in all courses. These experiences broadened my perspective, brought me out of a thick shell, and got me hooked on exploring the universe. I can't thank those teachers enough. I am incredibly fortunate to have experienced all of this for free, in a public school system, right here in the US. It truly was a model for how secondary education should work, and I owe much of my understanding of the world to that school district. I was the smart kid up until high school, never studied, everything was easy, advanced reading blah blah blah, now I am a C plus B student and have no freaking clue how to study. My nephew actually had serious academic issues because of how smart he is. Hear me out. Up until high school, he didn't have to study whatsoever and he could do all of his homework on the bus. When he started HS, he had no idea how to study and sitting down to actually concentrate on homework was difficult for him too. It probably didn't help that his narcissistic butthole mother declared that he was a child prodigy a little too soon. God dang do I hate my sister-in-law. If he has to study in high school, he can't be that smart. Clearly he knew how to do homework since he previously did it on the bus. Well, I almost always felt like a fraud when people would mention I was gift because I didn't feel gifted. I thought everyone was like me. My junior year of college when I actually gave my all to a class and still got a B plus. Frick you accounting. Where I finally understood that things don't come easily to people sometimes and they really just can't comprehend a subject. As an adult I don't know if it's affected me much, I probably have an ego that's too big, 
but I feel like interpersonal skills and work ethic are gonna get my further in life than natural smarts. You've been spotted by the curious cow comment below and let him know what you're doing. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check out another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.